Hey everyone, so in today's vlog, we are gonna be talking about expectations and how having expectations of people actually um, makes you powerless. And then also, I'm gonna throw conditional and unconditional love into the can of worms. So, so let's talk about conditional and unconditional love real quick. Conditional love is basically having conditions on your love. For example, my son, I love him a little bit more when he throws out the garbage, when he listens to me, when he does his chores without me yelling or just like asking him to do it. Those conditions on my love are because I have certain expectations of my child, right? So is that unconditional love? Absolutely not, it's not unconditional love. The problem with this sort of love, and this can go into a relationship with a spouse as well, that yeah, we have conditions on our love because we expect our, our spouse to do certain things, certain chores around the house, or maybe outside, bring in a certain amount of income. These are expectations, and therefore, love is gonna be conditioned. Now, the problem with that is, when you expect anything from anybody, you re reduce your sense of power. And expecting things from other people, expectation, so your expectations of the other person are gonna be very different than what the other person's expectations of self are. So what do I mean by that? your expectations are going to be whatever is in your subconscious mind and however you interpret equal partnership or equality with any sort of relationship, whether it's with your child as well, your expectations are gonna be based on your past and whatever you have in your subconscious mind. The problem is you the things that you expect or the conditions that you now have on love are not gonna be your partner's past. So where whatever your partner has gone through, wherever his subconscious mind is at, is basically your partner's internal personality and you cannot break somebody's personality. Therefore, having expectations on people is usually you're just creating space for hurt. You're gonna hurt yourself and you're gonna hurt the other person. And I know this doesn't resolve like that frustrating feeling of, well, who's gonna throw out the, I'm not throwing out the garbage. That's not my job. I do everything around the house. You need to throw out the garbage. And if the garbage isn't thrown out, I get pissed off. I get, I'm human, I get pissed off. So how do you come to a fine balance? There has to be a give and take and there has to be an absolute understanding through nourishment, through unconditional love for the other person. So why is the other person laxy, lazy in life and you know, okay, your partner perhaps, okay, with what they have and not interested in making more money, let's say, or getting another job or more into their hobbies or sometimes more into their own depression than just moving on and meeting your expectations as a spouse. Again, we've created the gap, right? So now if they don't, you're gonna be hurting them because you're gonna be harping on them all the time and they're gonna mirror you. Because don't forget, however you are acting towards a person or the internal feeling that you have towards another person, that person will mirror that feeling right back. So, I'll give you an example of that. So for example, and Teal Swan does this the best. For example, if you walk into a room and, and there's people there and someone gets jealous of you, she may not even know 
or he may not even know that they're feeling this jealousy in them. It's very subtle, right? The ego can be loud. The ego can be subtle when it needs to be. What that person's going to do is they're going to walk up to you and they're going to mirror jealousy. They're going to start mirroring the jealousy. So now you're in this situation where you're talking to somebody who is mirroring a feeling that they felt within them towards you. So how do you fix that? How do you actually stop the jealousy? Because otherwise you could get offended and I could just blow up or I could just slowly become resentful and move on with my life. But when you recognize the characteristics and you know, oh, that other person is just bringing on me what's internally in them and I am not going to mirror it back. And usually when you make the decision of not mirroring that behavior back, that's when the behavior ends. There's no more ongoing symptoms or you're not gonna fall into the chaos of that person's internal feeling of jealousy towards you. That's that, it, you stop it by changing the subject increasing your energy to a more positive loving vibe you cut it now okay that's a situation at a party let's go back to the scenario of a spouse or a child how do you deal with that because you see these people every single day so yeah there's expectations yeah the love is conditional first of all you have to get out of them that mindset because what i'm about to tell you is is really hard to do you basically just have to let go of your expectations of the other person and then you have to go inside and you have to understand what are you lacking. There's something inside of you that you are lacking and you want your, your spouse or your child to fulfill in material needs or in duties so that you think that lack, whatever it is, will be fulfilled but I promise you it won't. Another problem will arise. When you have expectations or your love has conditions, the problems never end. The ego, because that's very egoic, will always bring up new challenges because that's what the ego is there for. But when you begin to nip it in the bud, and let's say your spouse doesn't have a job and you're like, just get a job and make a little bit of money, you know, like maybe we'll be more comfortable then, hurry up. But then your spouse is going through this bout of depression are you still gonna push and expect? Because that spouse may listen to you and go get a job, but I promise you, it's probably not gonna bring them happiness. They'll come home more miserable. They'll come home blaming you. There's gonna be a larger gap in your marriage. This is just the way expectations and conditional love works. So in that sort of situation, how do you deal with people you don't? You let them ride the wave. Yeah, it sucks when your partner is depressed and are not motivated or comfortable when you're a go-getter. Your personality, your intention is, I wanna like conquer the world. I wanna do this, I wanna do that. Maybe you need to learn some lessons from your spouse that maybe you need to slow down because you know our speed of technology is too quick. We're supposed to be going at the speed of nature. See that water over there? We're supposed to be moving at the speed of nature and nature is intuition-based and programmed with the divine. That's it, nature, put the divine potentiates. Nature accepts. If there's going to, if the clouds wanna create snow or rain or hail nature doesn't resist it nature is like your wish is my command and we all get hail so this sort of expectation i know it's a dirty matrix intertwined cycle that is we feel entitled to have one up on our spouses, one up on our children. It never works. So you kind of need to go inside and you need to kind of like look at what the hell am I lacking? And for me, with my son, with my expectations of you're gonna clean up, you're gonna do this, you're gonna whatever. I mean, I give him breaks. If, if 
if he's in a hurry or in a rush to get out, I'll, I'll give him a break. Like, okay, do it when you come back. That's fine. I don't have strict expectations, but it just needs to get done. This to me, it used to be unconditional love, but now it, I was sorry, this used to be conditional love, but now I can say it's unconditional love because he's also learned, he's a kid, right? So I'm supposed to mother him, guide him, parent him. He's also learning responsibility and skills that he's gonna need when he has a family and he'll teach his children. So even though my love started with having conditions, you're gonna do your chore, you do your own laundry, now it's become unconditional because I wasn't so strict with expectations. I still, if he's busy, then I would take the garbage, I wouldn't throw it fully out, but I would put it to the stairs. I would still help him. I would do as much as I can and show him nurture and that he's not alone and we're in this together. There's this field of balance. And what that did for me was it gave me that I also was looking for, I was looking for help. Like I've done this all by myself for a very long time. And as he grew older, I taught him how to do his own laundry. and. It's because I didn't want to do it and I wanted to give him responsibility and that was one less thing for me to do. And now we're at the we're at the point where I, he learned how to do laundry when he was nine, he's 17 now. He prefers, he doesn't let me do his laundry. He does mine, but he won't let me do his because his clothes are so precious that he doesn't, there's certain things he doesn't want on the in the dryer and he hang dries his clothes. So now he has his own system in his head and he wants me not to touch his laundry. So do you see like you have to bring, expectations will only bring you pain. Expectations are resistance. Expectations are conditional love. They only bring pain and suffering. Look inside yourself, what is lacking? And there need, you need to come to a place of balance with your partner if you wanna keep the relationship going. And in this balance, you'll come back to the foundations of unconditional love, but that takes a lot of work and a lot of uh, introspection. Hope that helps, love you guys.